Okay. Please use your calendars if necessary you know, to refer back in time. It was either um, August 16th or August 23rd of 1984. I remember that because it was the week before school started and it was the Thursday of the Sprite Night at theme park. Um, I met some guys there that were from Boys Town and they had um, well, I met one in particular, um, his name is Jeff Hubble, and um, Jeff Hubble had said that there was going to be a party that Friday, and would I like to come? And I said, you know, sure, that I would go. And so that next night, which was, um, I met him on a Thursday that next night, which was Friday, I went to a party. And it was at that party that I met Larry King. At the time that I met Larry King, I did not know that he was Larry King. I, I had met him. It was the first time I'd ever met him. Okay. And uh, after you uh, had met uh, Mr. King... Uh, that and with several other people that were at the party. Um, it, in the beginning, wasn't very intense at first, but within three months, within three months after that, I was seeing um, at least someone from that social group, you know, and later I'd been there about an hour, and Rob came, and he started talking to me, and, um, who was that that came? Rob Rodman. Okay. I I was told to call him Rob Robbie. Okay. Well, just for the record, later on, you knew Rob later on to be Bob Wadman. Right. Police Chief of right. Omaha, Nebraska. Is that right? Right. Okay. At this time, I still did not know who he was. Okay, go ahead. Um, he came, and we were the only two people in the living room. And he was talking to me, and... Um, Fixed me a drink. What kind of a drink? He knew I liked champagne. Okay. And I think he even brought a bottle of champagne. Okay. Um, I am almost positive that someone called him and told him that I was there. Um, and he told me how pretty he thought I was. And he said that he liked my outfit that I was wearing. And he wanted to know what I was wearing underneath it. Yeah, well, what kind of outfit were you wearing? I was wearing a... Um, it was an outfit that I had gotten for homecoming. I was to be in the homecoming parade, and it was a leather-type jumpsuit. Okay. And it was nice. It was sexy. It was about ten years too old for me. As a matter of fact, my mom, when she found it, she cut it up. Um, and he said he liked it, and he wanted to know what I was wearing or anything. How did you answer that question? Um, I was flirting, and um, I asked him what he thought I was wearing or anything. And um, he asked me if I was wearing a bra, and he said that he couldn't, you know, see my breasts, and he told me that I had really nice um, breasts, and. Um, he touched me. Touched you where? My breast. Which hand? Um, this one. I was sitting, um, when, um, we were sitting there talking and he said, um, when he wanted to tell me what a pretty girl he thought I was, he said, you know, come here, I want to talk to you about something. And, you know, he sat me down on his lap, and he put this arm around me, and he was feeling my bottom, and first he started... That arm being what? 
I suppose I was saying just like I No, I was sitting because we were sitting in the chair that was against the wall, so he had to have this arm around me and this arm. Okay. Was feeling me. So, okay. Um, he started touching me through my clothes, and then he undid. Um, my jumpsuit had a zipper jump on it, and he began to undo it, and I asked him to stop, and I was wearing a lace. Bra. And he asked me why he should. And um, he told me how pretty I was. Okay. And that he just wanted to see. Okay, and what did you say? Um, I was kind of scared. Um, you know, he had asked me before where my parents thought I was again, and I told him that I was supposed to be at a football game. And when I, the first time I, I asked him to stop, you know, I asked him, what are you, what are you doing? Because he started to unzip it. Um, you know, he, uh... Move your clothing. Yes. Did he make love to you? Make love? Robin, my, he never made love to me. He may have had sex with me, but he never made love to me. Okay. Thank you. Not um, sex, sex. Um, he kissed me. Um, uh, that was the night that he taught me how to get him. And by head meaning oral sex, is that correct? Yes. Did he force you to do that? I know it's difficult. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I think I could have said no. Okay. But I don't know. Okay. And you know, Alicia, you're a victim, and uh, but the young age. Let's go off camera for a minute. Um, he took my leg and he folded it. This is a big chair, one of those cushy kind, and so I was straddling him. Were you kind of afraid? Yeah, I was really scared. Uh, did you tell him you were afraid? Um, he was talking to me. The whole time that this was going on, he was talking. And he said that he knew that I wasn't a virgin anymore. And... And how did he know that? I don't know how he knew that. That's why I think that what happened that night was supposed to happen that night, the night that I lost my virginity. Um, and he asked me what my parents would do if they knew I wasn't a virgin anymore. Okay. Now how did you respond? I said my dad would kill me. Okay. Um, and how grown up I was. And um, he said he wanted to teach me.
fit you want. Teach me how to make a man happy. Um, show me what a real woman does. And then he said, um, at that time he just kind of, I mean, to kind of lighten him, and he started kidding about doing the zipper thing, and he told me not to do a zipper. And by that time he would stand up, and he told me not to do a zipper. And he'd taken the cushion from the chair and put it on the floor, and I put my knees on it. And after I went into his apartment, um, he pulled out his underwear. And he told me what to do. Did he grab your head and pull you toward yes. him? Yes. After it was over, I ran to the bathroom and threw up. Was anybody else present when that happened? No. No one came out of that bedroom or that no. one? And at this time of evening, it's still early enough where there's not many people at this party. After he came out of the bathroom, he told me he was sorry. Sorry. So he's crying. And he told me he'd buy me a dress. And he said, um, he said, you go to Central, don't you? Central High School. You go to Central High School, don't you? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, um, Monday after school, Brandeis was still open. Brandeis downtown was still open. And he said, you go down there and you find a dress that you like. And he told me not to worry about money and that he would buy me this dress. And he said that he wanted to take me to lunch on Wednesday. And he said to me, him out on the side, um, and that he would take, you know, lunch, and I could leave school just to walk out. I mean, after being through this so long, um, I can look back and I know that was planned. You know, I knew that those guys knew before, and that he was going to hit on me. I didn't know that then, and I didn't know that for probably a year later. Okay. I didn't know. No. Brought me down. Okay. Oh. And, and, and in, in case you don't. He asked me if I would do it again. 
to the Lord's God's good hand. And I started to cry. And he said, no, 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 don't cry. And then he asked me if he could just touch me, and I didn't say anything. I started the molding feeling. And um, he said he wouldn't. And he jerked off. He masturbated. Yeah. So when he took your clothes off, or when you took your clothes off, did he take his clothes off? No. When I started to cry, and he was touching me, he started into his pants, and I started to get real scared because I didn't know that he was going to rape me or what was going to happen. And I think I started to cry, and. He told me that it was okay, and then he asked, then he started to touch my breast because I wasn't wearing anything, a shirt or anything. And my dress was all hyped up around, he was all hyped up around my waist, everything. And um, he asked me if he was touching my breast, and he asked me if I liked it. And um, I was supposed to tell him that I liked it. And he had undone his pants, and he was stroking himself. Uh, is he standing up or sitting down? He's standing up. I'm sitting on a table. Did he have an ejaculation? Yes. Did he ejaculate on you? He wanted to. I moved back and then he got real mad because I wasn't supposed to do that. As a matter of fact, he got some on the dryer. And I was just sick. Then what happened? <sighs> um, he was mad. He was pretty mad. Did he use foul language towards him? Um, yeah, he said, God damn it, and, you know, I tell you to do something you know, you're supposed to do it, and he grabbed, he grabbed both, and he pulled me to him, and he said, next time I tell you to do something, or I tell you to sit, you sit, <coughs> and, because I, when he started to come, I jumped back, and I, I wasn't supposed to do that, and he's just here, now, um, just walking, you know, just leaving, and, Larry, the kid Larry, came in and he said, you're not leaving until I say you can leave. And I was like, okay. And I had seen him beat up a kid that wouldn't go in the bedroom before. And I didn't want to get beat up. So you stayed. So I stayed. Um, and I stayed in the, I mean, I hung out in the kitchen the whole time because I didn't, you know, I wanted to leave, so I was just kind of hide now in the kitchen. Um, what other adults were at this party? I didn't All right, anything else on him? No. Nope. Uh, Alan Bear? Yeah, he he would meet um, he would meet good luck and um, he'd go down to the uh, old market and if he found a young man that he met that he uh, had an interest in, he would give him money to meet him at his office um, at the Twin Towers. Um, and the kid was supposed to say, um, more often than not, a lot of times he had him run naked on the treadmill that was in his office. And what would he do? Um, this is a weird part, absolutely nothing, he just sit there and watch. Wouldn't say a word, wouldn't do anything, because once Troy was telling me about how he would get a hundred bucks every time he ran, it would only be for 15 minutes, Alan wouldn't do anything, just watch him. And uh, this is Troy telling you firsthand. Right. Did you ever uh, see any of that? I saw Alan give him money. 
Um, I saw later on that they were lovers, but I never was in their presence when he was running Nika. So you actually, you've actually per personally witnessed Alan Bear have sex with different kids? I have seen him kiss, fondle, I've never seen him penetrate, but I have seen him kiss, fondle, um, how about, oral, how about oral sex? Yeah. From kids? Yes. How about uh, himself performing on the uh, kids? Now, I never saw any adult giving oral sex. Just receiving it. Just receiving it. And that's what I mean, I mean by um, these men sucking on other voices' penises. Okay. Uh, this is after January 1984. He uh, told me that um, I was going to meet him again for um, lunch and that I was going to do it on Wednesdays and that he had it all arranged and I was just supposed to leave right after lunch. And sometimes we went to uh, the Starlight Motel. Sometimes we went to some hotels in Bellevue. Um, Who would go? He and I. Sometimes. Um, he and I are referring to. Wadman and myself. Some we didn't always have sex on those times. Um, sometimes he had other men there. We. Uh, where would you go to the, uh, let's just back up here. It was Wednesdays. It was always on Wednesdays that we went to hotels or anything else. During the school year? It was during the school year. I mean, I left school. I walked out of school. And, you know, I went down and I met him at the... What year? This was 1984, this winter and summer part of it. So you're telling me January, February, March, April, May. Right. Throughout the summer too? No. I, in the summer, of course, how am I going to tell my mom? Um, also, we left on vacation. Um, I also... Um, Wednesday or every Wednesday? Never. <laughs> never had to. And I never had to, um, I never signed out. I just walked out. They saw me leave. Um, did the principal uh, at Central High during that time period, uh, um, was he involved in something no. that been, that you know? That I know of, no. What about the person who kept the attendance records? I worked in the attendance office when I, in 1986, my last year, senior year. I worked in there for about two months. No, there are two of them old ladies. Did you ever look up your attendance record from uh, 1984, 85? Mm -mm. No, I didn't have access to records. Okay. Uh, so you just back up here. Okay. The Starlight Motel where? Starlight Motel is right across the bridge. It's in Council Bluffs and it's on Broadway. Okay, and would you usually use the same room? Um, yeah. And what room number was thing. that? It was the bottom room that was three rooms down from the office. All right, uh, let's draw a picture of that. The uh, Quality Inn, which is in Bellevue, okay. um, and I don't know the address. Okay. Um, I went there twice. We also went to this dive, um, it's called the Holiday Motel, and it's right off of the main road that runs through Bellevue, way back to Galvin. And it's this little itty bitty motel that sits up on the hill and you have to drive your car up on the gravel part to be able to get up there. And that was whatever motel room. Okay. Can you go in any other hotels? You mentioned the Holiday Inn? No, that was the Holiday Motel. Okay. In any other hotels? No. All right, now let's back up. Any time that you went to these hotels on a Wednesday, uh, who paid for the room? I don't know. There were always key was there. They already had a key, or else the door was open. If the door was open, or they already had a key. Okay, and... Uh, the only thing I know is that it cost $65 for the um, 
holiday motel because I saw a receipt for the holiday. Mm -hmm. Who got that receipt? I. It was um. This is one of the times I got slapped. Um. He was in the bathroom. His pants were on, and by him I mean Robert Wyman. I I don't want to get mixed up here. Just okay. let's just stay on the subject matter, and then we'll we'll shift he, over. He had the receipt. He Robert. He had the receipt. Okay. Any time that you went to any of these hotels, did Bob Wildman ever have to stop and pay? Never. Okay, Not never. that I knew. All right, and he would always pick you up every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And where would he always pick you up at? The bus stop. If he didn't pick me up, then Larry, the kid Larry, the, the 17, 18 year old, would pick me up. All right, did you ever have any of your friends ever witness it, you ever being picked up? Um. Yeah, and they knew I was gone too. I mean, how do you, you know? Who? Um, one of my friends, Chris Davis, knew I was gone. And where is she at? He, he lives in Grand Island. Okay, what's he do now? He is um, working at Valentino's. Okay. And he is a floor, whatever else you want. Intercourse? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that was, after the first three times, that was maybe once a month. The other three weeks out of the month was, and then, no, there were a couple of times where he picked me up more than once a month, but at least once a month, Larry would pick me up, and we'd go to a hotel and there'd be men that I did not know. Who would arrange these other men? I don't know. I didn't ask. I you never thinking, knew who they I were. never knew who they were. Was that always again one-on-one? -on -one? It was always again one-on-one. -on -one. Would anybody be... Anybody else be there to watch? Would be watching? Yes. No. I was supposed to go. Larry would pick me up. And these were when I didn't know whoever they were. Okay. Larry would pick me up. So, so, during these times, just so I understand, Bob Wildman's not in this now. No, but he knew what was going on. All right. But, so, Larry would pick you up. Not Larry King. Larry. But the other Larry right. would pick you up, take you to the hotel. What would Larry do? Larry would sit in the car. All right, and okay. And if I walked out of that hotel room, if I walked out of that hotel room without having to do what I did, what I was supposed to do, then I was in a lot of trouble. Okay. What do you mean, a lot of trouble? He would beat me up. Um, did he? He slapped me around a few times. Okay. Um, he wanted to show me that he that he meant, you know, I'm tough. Okay, how long would you be in these hotels? Um, anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. Oh, okay. And then you'd be driven back yeah. to school? Um, I'd be driven back to school. Um, usually around that block, it's a huge block. Yes. And I was let off somewhere because it, it Near was there. kind of Jocelyn, too. I was in somewhere around there. And then you would go back to school? No, I no. never, I'm not going back to school after that. Um, sometimes I just walk around. Um, sometimes uh, I go home. Um, I don't know the names. you never seen them again? Um, no, I didn't say that. I didn't know the names. Do you know who they are now? Um, I know who one is. Who is that? Judge Crossy. Okay. The other people, did you did you have sex with some of these same men on different occasions? Yes. So I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't just a one-time thing. From, from January to May, one person each time. Mm -hmm. It might be several, the same person on several different occasions, right. off and on, in between the time you and Bob Wadman were getting right. together. Okay, I understand. During any of these times. Did you ever receive any gifts or money? No. Only threats. Okay. I just had physical contact. Okay. During any of these times, did anybody ever tie you up and have sex with you? Yes. And who was that? I don't know. Okay. Did Bob Wadman ever tie you up? 
No, he threatened to. Okay. Uh, So these afternoon get-togethers, did anyone ever physically beat you up? Um, no, I was not beat up. I was slapped around. Um, um, They would do things to hurt me intentionally, sexually. Um, would they put objects inside you? Is that what you mean? Yes, they. Uh, um, um, one time they said I was too old, yeah. and that I had to be shaved. Um, some of those were just real harsh. Do these people uh, verbally or physically threaten you if you didn't cooperate that they would harm you? Um, only one guy did. Um, the rest didn't have to because Larry was sitting in the car and I knew that all they had to do was say that they didn't like it and he would get me. And what did you take that to mean, get you? He would um, hurt me. Uh, they disappear, um, take me away. Um, he would beat me up. He could kill me if he wanted to. Um, physical violence. Do any of these things to you? No, he, um, he, uh, would grab it and pinch me and um, pull my hair. Um, sometimes he'd slap me. Um, and why would he slap you? Anywhere he felt like hitting. Um, if I said something that was maybe the wrong thing to say, he'd slap my mouth. Um, He would uh, pinch me really hard. Um, either on my breasts or sometimes in my genital area. Um, he'd grab my arm and dig his fingers in up underneath here so it would leave bruises. Um, but, yeah. During any of these counters, uh, were photographs ever taken of you? Yes. And who took some of these photographs? <coughs> I don't know his name. He's young. I, um, I believe his name is Rusty. Okay, now let me clarify so we're not getting... Um, I was 19 and I had written some bad checks. I was in jail, put in jail on a Friday night. Where? Um, OPBD okay. downstairs, not DC, but OPD. And that Monday morning I went and saw a judge. I had like a two ten thousand dollar bonds and I signed my name to a piece of paper and walked out and that's it. The judge 
you know, um, they asked me a couple of questions, where do you live? And I told them where I lived, and they said, okay. And they asked me if I had a job, and I said, yeah. And I walked out. Did uh, Wadman ever take photographs of you at other parties? No, he never took any photographs okay. of anyone. I he had done some favors for Larry, and that um, Larry owed him. Um, what kind of favor? He never came out and said, you know, what he did. Um, he had said that uh, um, Larry um, wouldn't be so rich if it wasn't for for him. He said that. Um, he said actually what he said is he wouldn't have so much money. And I mean by this time did I knew. Did you hear that? This is in 80, late 86, 87. Did, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. And where did you hear that? When we were talking. Where? We were talking, it was um, in the Twin Towers apartment, and we were upstairs and we were talking, and Larry had gotten into a fight with this guy, Gene. Larry King? Larry King had gotten into a fight with this guy, Gene. Gene was one of his lovers. Gene Mahoney? I don't know. You mentioned um, a kid named Wally Webb, and I know a guy named Joel Webb that was part of that, that was my age. His name was Joel Webb. Um, he was there one time. Um, a lot of it was um, me handcuffed with my hands behind my head um, and my feet tied and, and doing different things. Um, what, what do you mean? Uh, Sometimes it would be a guy straddling over my face. Okay. Um, and that's when they took pictures. Okay, and when you say they, who, who are you referring to? Okay, once a rusty guy took pictures. Um, Larry took pictures quite, most of the time. Larry King took pictures quite a bit during that time. Um, if there was any way I could get out of a picture session, I did. If you know, I used every excuse, everything I could possibly think of to get out of those. Or other? Even. No, I never meant their names. They were too busy talking to much of the adults. Okay. Uh, since you brought up Judge Carlson, when was the first time you had a sexual? Uh, a sexual encounter with Judge Carlson? It was in um, the spring of 1984. And where did that take place? That took place at the Quality Inn. Where? In the, in the hotel room. Quality Inn, where? Bellevue. I'm not sure if that's the name now of it, because I think it's changed names like two or three times, okay. but that was, that's the name now. Okay. Larry King? No, Larry King Larry. Okay. And what did uh, Judge Carlson do to you? Um. That occasion. Me sex. Straight sex? Um. I mean, did he tie you up? No, he didn't do anything to me. Okay. So did he make you perform oral sex on him? Yes. Okay. And then we had straight sex. Did he perform oral sex on you? No. Okay. And, and and again, when, what's the time period now? Of course he wasn't going to say anything about him. You think what, well, uh, Father Val Peters or Father uh, Hupp, the director of the Boys Town? I don't know. Okay. Um, all I know is that they had to go talk to somebody, and they... Um, Never give you an idea who? No. They found out that one time Jeff Hubble came home drunk, and they put him in Epley Chemical Dependency Center, and they got him out of there. Larry King and those guys got him out of there, and that's right after that he disappeared.
Okay, when was that? That was in um, '84. Um, that had. Let me look at my calendar here. That had to be like November of 1984. Okay. Anything else there? Okay. Well, the ones that didn't have anything, or I didn't think that really cared, they gave them stuff. Um, got to drive around in Mercedes, um, clothes. You could stay at the apartment if you wanted to, the Twin Towers apartment. You know, go ahead, crash out here for a week. I don't, know, I don't care. Um, you need some money, we'll give you some money. And those of us that didn't like to be involved and didn't want to be involved were threatened. Kurt? Oh, so. Any, uh, and, and who would do these threatening remarks? Larry King. Do you think Larry King personally did? I mean, do I think he did? Um, but he doesn't have any power. He, uh, well, if he wants, you know, if when I was 17, um, and he was talking to this guy, Gene, and I was not supposed to hear this, he pulled my hair, and he brought my face right up to his face, and he said that if I ever see or I ever hear anything again, if I ever see or hear anything that was said, I'll never see or hear anything again. And, you know, when he's got... You know, when someone does that to you and they, and you know that they have money, you know, I, I just knew him as a banker. And when they threatened, you know, that I can go find somebody that will kill you or that will kill your family, um... You're not telling anybody. Okay. Um, the second flight I took was, that was March, it was right after school got out. And that was, Troy was involved in some sort of movies, pornography movies. And Troy had said to me, Alicia, and this time we flew through LAX. Um, you went from where? Omaha to LAX. We went Omaha, Denver, LAX. On what airline? Um, United. Okay, and what's the date? What was the date of the second? Um, it was right after I got out of school, so it had to be May of June. Um, May, June. What year? Of 87. Okay, and the oh. first flight, what, uh, what airline did you use? The first flight, we, um, I think it's been united every single time. And how was your ticket printed? Um, it didn't have my real name on it. Um, I think one time it had my real name on it. Um, it had, uh, let me think of the name, because it was a really kind of unusual name. Um, it was like Carmelia, Carmen Carmelia, I, I don't know the last name that was on it. They never let me have the tickets. It was always, okay, here's your ticket, and I gave it to whoever when they came and got them. And then envelope, I never had that envelope thingy. You know, it was always, he Who had the ticket? When Larry, the kid, went with us, Larry did. Um, the times that I went with Troy, Troy did. Uh, one, a couple of times we flew Braniff to Kansas City, okay, and then well, we took United Let's not get all this thing here. Okay, now we're back to the second flight. You said you flew mm -hmm. United. Right. Who was on that flight? Troy and I. Troy, what's his last name? Troy bon Boner. Boner. Okay, and you went to where? We went to LAX. Okay, and uh, how was your ticket printed? Do you remember? No, I don't. I don't remember the name on it. All right. And what was the purpose of the trip? The purpose of the trip was Troy had been out there before to do some pornography, uh, pornographic movies. He wasn't in them. He, he was, was carrying them or picking them up? He was picking them up 
for, I believe, Alan Bear. I'm pretty sure it was Alan Bear. Um, he was picking them up, and I didn't even think they were supposed to be there, but Troy just kind of on a whim decided, you know, hey, let's go. I had my luggage. We went to the beach for the day. Uh, where did you go when you got there? We went, we already had prepaid, everything was done, to a hotel called Carmel by the Sea. And uh, what time again is this? This is L.A. Okay. And we already had, it was called Carmel by the Sea. And... Remember what room? Upstairs room. Um, no, I can't remember the room. Okay. Um, and I remember the, uh... Um, VHS type movies, um, a jam bath type full. Um, we came back with those, and I think there was something else in there, but he didn't tell me what there was. Just by the way he acted, we went out there. You know, we just had our overnight bath. What's going with this? Okay. We met them in Pasadena. Met who in Pasadena? We met Larry King was there. There was um, three boys that I had seen at one of the receptions at the French Cafe were there, and I'm almost positive they were Boys Town Boys. Almost positive. Um, they were there. You mean graduates of Boys Town or, or present? I think they were present because they were young. Well, how would they get away for a long period? I have no idea. Okay. Um, they were. Like I said, I'm not sure if they were boys town, but I'm almost positive they were at that reception. I know that they're from Omaha. I know that. Um, we went to this house, and Troy had told me that he had even lived there for a little while back in um, like 1980, 81, because he had lived there, and. Um, we stayed there. Everybody else was there for the day, but by that time I was old enough that I didn't need to tell my parents, you know, where I was going or anything. I just kind of blew them off. Um, Danny King, um, Jeremy, and these three boys left that night to go back to Omaha. They just flew out, the street. They flew out with us during the day. We went to a restaurant, an Italian restaurant that is right all by the piers, um, right by the beach. And then Troy and I went out and we just hung out on the beach. And when I later talked to him, they told us that there was um, some filming, something going on there, something, pictures. We're done because afterwards, when I left, when I left, there weren't pictures and there wasn't a VCR camera. And when I come back, there is. There did, are pictures. Did you, did you uh, take part in any sexual activity out in California? No. By this time, I was too old. Then they weren't interested in no, anymore. No, they weren't. I was there to. Um, by that time, uh, there were a lot of threats against me. There was a lot of blackmail. Um, and my main job was to uh, kind of make make them feel comfortable, make them feel at ease, and make who feel at ease? A lot of kids, um, like uh, there was this one boy named John that just had a real hard time with a lot of the advancements, the sexual advancements, and. One time Larry told me to uh, calm him down and just talk to him. So, any of the, so on that particular flight, did any of the boys have sex with the adults? I was not there, but I believe so. I saw pictures. You know, like I said, I was not there. What kind of pictures? Um, there were pictures of the boys together. Um, of the kid, of the kids that went out with you right. on the flight. There was Danny, Jeremy, and these three boys that left, and they all left that night. Okay, so there's four of you that went out, but now there's more. Are these kids, these other No, there's, cause there's four of us, and I told you we met okay. at the house where those three boys. A lot of, a lot of it was just, some of them were straight snapshots, and they just naked bodies. 
Um, some of it was two of them together kissing. Um, there was only one other black boy that was there, and there was a picture of an older man's body, and he was black, and I believe it was Larry's. Um, and there was another young boy that was performing oral sex on him. Do you, do you know who took those photographs? I, I was not there. Okay. And there was also a VHS camera with tapes on it. Where did you, where did you see these pictures at? They were in the house. That's where you were staying? Right. And how long were you out there? I was out there for two nights and three days. And then we flew back. That was the time that we went through Kansas City. We flew Brand up in a little small Cessna type plane. We flew to Kansas City, and from Kansas City we went out. And from Kansas City we flew to Las Vegas, and from Las Vegas we flew to LAX. And that time there was a drug transfer that went on because I was there and I saw it. Okay, and uh, how did uh, uh, what airline ticket did you use? Go under. I. Did you ever see your ticket? Um. It was a little brown ticket that had a green stripe going through Did it. Did you just look at your printing on the card to see what name mm -hmm. you were using? Um. That was one of the ones that I had Carmen or Carmelia, Carmel, Carmen okay. type name on it. And what did Troy use? Um. I never saw his ticket. Um. He went under. Quite often, he told me that he went under um, Troy Banner, Troy Bonner. He just always changed his last name. More often than not, Troy went under his real first name. And he usually chose, I think, my name. And a lot of times, I don't think I was supposed to be going. I was with him. He just wanted you to come along. Right. So no one knew that you came along? I don't know. I don't think so. He, I was not supposed to tell anybody. He never said, Alicia, nobody knows you're with me, so hush hush. He just said, you know better than to talk about this to anybody, don't you? And I said, yeah. So I never talked to him. Um, so I don't know if he used his money to bring me along. We were having, um, I wouldn't say a serious relationship, but we've been friends for years. and. Um, he'd always talked about marrying me. Okay. Um, did you take anything out there? No. Aside from a little bit of luggage, nothing. Okay. Um, and what did you come back with? We came back with cocaine. And how do you know that? Because I saw it. I was there. Um, he bought... Who bought? Troy. From who, I do not know, but I do know that he's a friend of Al Alvarez's. Um, and where did that transaction take place? This took place at the Embassy Suites Hotel that's right by um, LAX. Right by LAX. Did this take place in a room? Yes. Remember that Upstairs room? room. Upstairs room, far, far east corner suite. Corner. The east corner that um, is towards the beach. Yeah, the beach is right the room. It was already done. We met the guys. They were already in there. Okay. And he got what's normally $95 up here. I don't know the exact. I think mm -hmm. it's grams. He got it for $45. And how much did he buy? And he bought over $4,000 worth. So it wasn't a whole lot, but it was, you know, a nice little bag. And it was in powder form. And... And you've seen the exchange. I was there. And you seen the money exchange? I saw him give him the money. And, and how much money did he give him? He gave him about $4,000. Okay. And how much uh, good did he receive in return? He, get, he got a package about this big. Um, Troy had taken that package and he had smoothed it out and he put it on his body. He okay. taken and he put it, he opened it up and he put it in one of the Ziploc baggies and flatten it out and fold it over in half and so we had it right up here. Okay. And then how long were you out there? We were just out there for the day. Okay, and then you came back. And then we came back. And then what happened? 
And then he met Ellen Bear more often than not met us at the airport. And so that leads me to believe that, I mean, Ellen had to know that I was there. Even though he didn't see us get off the plane together or anything like that, I was there with Troy. Was Ellen standing at the gate? No. We met him down, you know, he'd pick us up at the thing. And so when you came off the plane, did, did Alan pick you and Troy up? No. Wait, we'd go down, and he, um, if we had an overnight bag or something that went through the luggage, try to pick it up, and I would go to the car, whatever, that we had parked at the um, airport, and I would drive that, and then I would meet, then he would go with Alan, and I would usually meet them somewhere, I'm watching that at Alan's office. Did, did you see uh, Troy give uh, the belt to... Uh, Alan Bear? Yeah. yeah. You actually did seen it. He, I saw it. He, we went into his office. Um, How did we get from the airport to his office? I drove my car, Alan and Troy were in there, and Alan was driving a Jag. Okay. So he knew then that you went on this flight? I, you know, I believe so. Um, but on the other hand, he could think that I was just there picking up the car, too. Okay. All right. So then you all drive down to his office. We drive down to his office. It's the Twin Towers Conagra building. We drove down there, and sometimes, you know, it wouldn't matter if it was late at night or whatever, but he always had a key to get in and we'd go up or else there would be like a watchman there or something and we'd go upstairs I think one time I saw a watchman there and we'd go upstairs and you know try to lay it on the desk and he'd get some money or he so Alan didn't was, have any qualms about you seeing this transaction at this point. no he knew I, I'd known Alan by this time for over three four years okay all right. And then so Troy hands him the uh, the. He never hit uh, it. Okay. I guess he always just dropped it on the desk. All right. Days early. And by this time, I had my own apartment, the California. Okay, one in 1984. That was taken. It was the high school spring break. And how many days do you get for spring break? I think you get a week. Okay, and go ahead and... Uh, I was only gone overnight. Okay. I told my parents that I was going to spend the night over at a girlfriend's house. You were only gone one night? I was only gone one night. Okay. Uh, I went one day and came back the next. Okay, and uh, where did you leave from? We left from Omaha. And where did you go? We went through Denver and... Field, I believe we filled up. We, did, we stopped in Denver. I never had to get out of the plane. We never got out of the plane. Um, I don't know why we stopped there, for what we stopped there. Um, Larry King got out of the plane. Um, there was uh, one of the guys there from the French Cafe was there. And those were the only two adults that were there. That so were there. That were in the plane. Besides the guy, the pilot. Um, How many pilots? There was only one. And what kind of a plane was this? Um, it was a small Cessna type plane. Was it a jet or prop? It was the small kind that are not. Um, Did it have propellers? Or was it a jet engine? No, it was the kind where you get in and you can see everything. The small, like, like a six four seater. seater? Yeah, it was six. six. Seater, six yeah. seater. It was a small single yeah, engine or a twin engine. I don't know what those are. Okay. Um, there was only one guy that was driving the plane. So you couldn't. Uh, so when you're inside the plane, you could actually see the pilot. I could see the pilot. Yeah. Okay. All I right. mean, it's just like the part is that we sit in is no bigger than this table. Okay. All right. I understand. And that's why I said when, when we went to Denver, I think it was to fuel up, but I'm not sure. They wanted to stop in a um, North Platte, something like that. Did you? 
No, not the first time. All right. And so you stop in Denver. And how many passengers are on board from Omaha to Denver? Okay. There is me, and I did not want to be there. Danny, this little kid named Jeremy, and Troy was there, and this other kid I don't know. And plus the pilot. Plus the pilot, and plus Larry, and plus the other guy. And the other guy was sitting up with the pilot. So how many total people are on that plane, including there's the pilot? Two, there's the pilot, the guy from the French Cafe. Larry, Jeremy, okay, me, Troy, Dan King, I think that's it. And there's one kid I didn't know sitting in the back, so I went two, 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 and the two guys up there. So you're talking about eight? Eight. Yeah. Yes. Eight. There were three, there were six plant, there were six chairs that we could... Plus a pilot co-pilot. Right. Okay. So okay. you total for eight people. Well, yeah, but right. there were six passengers that could sit on it. Right. So that must have been a twin engine. I have, I don't know. I mean, I don't know anything about planes. How many motors did it have? I don't know. Where did the plane depart from? Omaha. Where in Omaha? Sky Harbor. Okay. I'm pretty sure that was Sky Harbor. Okay. All right. Did you take any excess baggage? No. Okay. Anybody take anything? Not that I know of. All right. What was the purpose of the trip? The purpose of the trip, I have no idea. I went... And I did not want to go. Okay. We lost that little boy that I don't know. Okay, give me the ages of the kids involved, including yourself. Give you the what? How old were you when you took that flight? It was 1984, I was 15. Okay, and the age of some of the other kids? Troy was 17, Danny was 13. This little boy that did not return with us was, um, he couldn't have been more than 12. 13. Where were their parents? Um, he did not return. And I don't. I had never seen him before or anything. But the, okay. So the boy got off the plane in Denver? No, he got off when we went to California. Okay, well, let's go back. See, so you, you land in Denver. Mm -hmm. What happened in Denver? Anything? No, we stopped. Okay. And like I said, I don't know anything about planes. Okay. And we've been drinking. And when you drink and you're that high up and you're in that little plane, I was totally bombed. Okay. Um, so no one left the uh, no one uh, left the airport. I don't think so. Like I said, I was this one. I'm not totally completely sure about because I was sober when we went through the North Platte because we need to get more gas. Did you stop in North Platte? Not this time, but on another all one. All right, let's just keep with this okay. flight. Was the boy white or black? He was white. Were all the kids white or black? There were, um, Danny's white, they're all white, okay. except for Larry King, okay. he's black. So we got seven whites and one black. Mm -hmm. So you stop at the Denver airport, mm -hmm. we've never been on. This trip seems to take forever. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. Okay. I didn't stop and stop right. where all right. we were. Um, I knew that we ended up in California in a smaller airport, it was not LAX. It was not any major airport. All right. So now you get to LAX. Mm -hmm. Same day? This this whole thing, God, took us hours. A good six hours. Yeah, that's fine. Seven, you know, six, seven hours. Um, it took a long time. It's not, it wasn't just a little hop, like a four-hour jet plane. Okay, so you get to LAX, or you get to California, you land in a small airport in Los Angeles. Right. Larry King and this boy get out. Okay. Larry King and the boy get out. These guys are still on the plane? We're still on the plane. Okay. I were Did Larry tell you to stay in the plane? Yes. Okay. We stayed in the plane. They got out. Who we got went. out? Larry King and the boy got okay. out. We went to another airport. And we still got the French Cafe guy with us. Okay. Okay. We get out of there. And finally, this time, we get to get out. Okay. We go. This time, Danny stays in... Danny and I both stay at this hotel. The um, French Cafe guy and Troy leave, and they're gone. And Troy never told me where they went. He wouldn't talk to me about it. We came, um, two guys came to the hotel room. 
I don't know who they are. Where did you stay? We stayed. It was one of those hotel rooms. I believe it was an em embassy suites, maybe a resident inn type thing. It was one of those where it's like a little apartment house, but it's yeah. a hotel. Do you remember what town? No, I never knew the town. Okay. But I know it was in California. Did you ever think they asked? I mean, I, know, I think they, I did. I mean, you were curious where you end up? I was scared to death. I didn't want to talk because Jeff had taken one of these. Right, who asked you to go on this trip? They, Larry had told me, Larry King okay. had told me that I'm going. Okay, and what was your purpose for going this trip? I believe it was for sex. These two guys came and one of them had Danny and the other one had me. And after they had been gone... White or black? They were both white and they were both businessmen. And they knew each other. Did they give you any money? No. Did not give us any money. Nothing. Nothing. They came to the door, you know... You're both staying in the same room? Right. In the same room, okay. Right. It's, it's a home town. Yeah, I know, I know what it is. And about an hour after they left... They take each, they take each of you in a separate room? Mm hmm Did they swap? No. No. Was there any kind of conversation, I'm going to take you or take the boy? Um, they, um, I don't know if, if what had been arranged beforehand or what was going on, but this, he's about 45, white, snow white hair, but he's kind of young looking, but he has white, gray, snow white hair. Um, he had an okay bill. And the guy that went a date, and he just, I mean, he knew that the girl was for him. And um, he was really weird. What did he do to you? Um, Tie up? Um... No. He wanted to have anal sex. Okay. Um, he wanted to hurt me. Um, after, um... Did he hurt you? Yeah, he did. Did he, did he use some kind of sex Boys. Um, no. He, um... Did he have anal sex with you? Yes. After he did, he wanted me to perform oral sex, and I wouldn't. And he slapped me, threw me, until I said, yeah, I would. Um... He took out a knife and he said he was going to cut my nipples off, my breasts off, if I didn't. Um, Did you scream at all? Who's going to help me? Okay, I just want to know if the other boy heard you. Um, I don't know if he did or not. I was, I was crying. Okay. Could you hear the other boy in the other room? No. Okay. Um. I was scared to death. I understand. I didn't know this person. I was in a town and I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know if he was going to kill me. I mean, I'd been left there. No, Larry's not here. No. Nobody's there. Just me and this guy I don't even know. And, and there's nobody even waiting outside the car for me or and nothing. Then, and then who's the, ki and then who's the boy that's in my hotel? Danny King. Danny King. And how old roughly? He's 13. 13. Okay. Did you spend the night with these people? After I did what he wanted... No, they left. So they were with you a couple hours? They were a good five, six hours. A long time. And it was horrible. When they left, what was the condition of Danny? Danny wouldn't come out of the room for a while. And, um... 
finally he let me in and he was really mad. Um, we were both pretty upset. Um, we wanted to take a shower so we could wash off. We didn't know if they'd come back and hurt us again. And we wanted to fall asleep in case they snuck back. And I was pretty scared. So you spent one night there? Yeah. And then the next day, who picked you up? Troy and the guy from the camp, French Cafe came back and then um, Troy kept apologizing and saying, oh, I wish I'm real sorry. Yeah. And yeah. nobody ever said anything. When did you see Larry King again? When we went back to that same airport and this time I wasn't drunk. And this, this time on the way back, we did, we peeled up in, um, we went from California to Las Vegas, and I believe it was a fuel up in Las Vegas, and from Las Vegas we went to Denver, and from Denver, I believe it was the Lincoln Airport that we went to, and then from there we flew back. Do you remember any of the FBOs that you landed on to take on to take on fuel? In other words, on the airports, they're they're called FBOs. They, they service airplanes and fuel them. And that, do you remember? You mean those truck things? Do you um, remember any of the uh, businesses like Skyline or an FBO? I remember um, when we were coming back. The uh, place that, because um, we didn't get back in Omaha until late that night. I mean, this is a long little trip. Um, they had the, you know, it was it was a Sunday, and so they had to call somebody out there. I mean, it was one of those places I remember, um, vaguely I remember them really pissed off because somebody wasn't out there, so we got to wait like 45 minutes to wait somebody to come out there and fuel it up and they were pretty mad and that was a real small little airport I was you know after that I just I didn't want to talk to anybody so you went out uh, again when, when did you go out this trip this did you have any money or, or I didn't just, receive a thing how about uh, did any of the other kids get anything not that I knew of. Who, who would you say said they were sorry? Troy did. And when did he tell you that? When he came back to the hotel room. So he knew what happened then, didn't he? Yeah, he knew. Were you mad at him? I just wanted somebody I knew that wasn't going to hurt me, and he'd never hurt me. And uh, I forgot, how old was, was Troy? He's two years older than me. In 1984, I was 15. He was 17. Okay. What was the name of the little boy that just made a one-way? I have no idea. I mean, who first was. name? I think it was Aaron. No one knows anything about that boy? I have never seen him before, and I've never seen him since. Like that other one. The other one just had a curtain up. And this one, it's like a room that they have up there. There's more than just a curtain. It's like a partition door type thing. And um, we went to Kansas City first. And from there we flew that paper that I'm showing you. Is that the flight maybe you might have been on? Very possible. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't. That's all right. 
but it's July 4th. I mean, I'm going to go to Kansas City. Okay, and what date were you talking about? I think it was a couple, I think it was a week after that. But it, it's possible it could have been July 4th because my parents went to Sioux City and they went there to be with some of their friends and they had a big picnic and they wanted right, to go. So it's either July 4th or the week after. Right. Okay, go ahead. Um, and you go to Kansas City. We go to Kansas City. All right. We go to the hotel with the waterfall. Crown Plaza. You know what I'm talking about. It had a waterfall. Um, we go to this hotel with the waterfall. It's nice. We had a suite. And I am scared to death and I'm pitching a fit. I'm just, you know, I'm crying. I know what's going to happen. I don't want to do it. I don't have anything to do. Did you ever make a scene in public? Um, no. And you went I mean, until you got to the room? No, I mean, um, I cried in front of the pilots. I think the pilots knew I was crying because Larry told me to hush up and they're very quiet. And I mean, once I'm on the plane, what can I do? I'm stuck. You know, if they decide they want to leave me there, then I'm stuck there. Or if they want to dump me somewhere, well then, I don't... Once I get on the plane, I don't have a choice anymore. Okay, so you get to Kansas City, you go to the... Hotel with the waterfall. What happens? They take me and Danny up to a room, and it's one of the suites, and it's the waterfall, and it's back behind the waterfall. Um, there's balconies that look out on this waterfall, um, and our room has a balcony that looks out on it, and. Um, Larry and Larry leave, and the same thing happens again. Two different guys. Um, I know it's painful, Freya, but take me through it just one more time. Um. Now who's the who's the boy that's with Danny, you? Danny, the same one. Same boy. Same one. Um. Danny's scared, and I'm just crying. Okay. Um, Do you remember what room you were in? We were one that almost directly overlooks the waterfall. There's like balcony type okay. things. That so if we went to Kansas City and looked, you would. I could you say, would, you yeah. could probably pick it out. It's one suite. It's way up, and it overlooks part of the waterfall. Okay. All right. Um, so then two strange men come to the to the room. Yeah, and one comes later, and he goes to Danny. Okay, so are we talking about three men? Total? Three men, but two only come the first time. Um, they come in, and I mean, by this time, I know what's going to happen. Danny knows what's going to happen, and obviously they know what they want to happen. And by this time, you know, it from the last trip, it had dawned on me that. If who if this guy's a nut and he wants to kill me, who is going to stop him? So do everything he wants and he'll leave as soon as he gets off. Okay. Um. So. These two men they come together the first time. Right. They come and I don't know if they stayed at that hotel or not. You know, because um, obviously it's hot outside and they're not perspiring or nothing. I mean, they don't seem hot at all. And they're wearing jackets, suit jackets and ties. Okay. So, I don't know, for some reason I kind of thought, well, maybe they're from the hotel. Alright, so are these people ordering you around? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, um, they, the guy stays out there with Danny and the guy that wants me takes his Come on, we're going to the back bedroom. And he wanted, um, he was weird. He took off his clothes. He had women's underwear on. Um, he wanted me to talk dirty to him. Um, and he was just weird. Um, he wanted to play house to play doctor. I mean, stupid little 
dumb games. He talked baby talk. Um, he was just weird. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm 15 years old and he asked me, do I have any dolls to play with? Um, he just gets real bizarre. Um, what do you mean, have you do? When he asked me if I had any dolls to play with, I told him no. And he asked me if I lost them. And I told him no, and he called me a liar, and he threw me over his knees, and he spanked me on my bare butt. And, I mean, he didn't just do it, but, I mean, he smacked me hard. And, I mean, he was just, I was really confused. It was like, oh, this guy's weird. Um, and he told me because I was, uh, he told me I was a bad girl. And that because I was, I had to take off my clothes and I was standing in the corner. Um, Did he take you sexually? Yeah. Did he tie you up? No. He wanted me to talk dirty. Um, he wanted me to ask him to take me. Um, he wanted me to get down my hands and knees and ask him and beg him, please. Um, if I didn't do it right, he took his belt and smacked me across the face, across the chest. Did he make you perform oral sex on him? Yes. I Did he didn't perform do oral sex on you? No. Could you hear Danny in the other room? The TV was on, and I had heard someone come in. So I knew someone else was in there because I heard them come in. There was a knock and someone came in. So I knew that there were two more people besides Danny out there. And there were at least two people besides Danny. And um, after um, everything was through with the sky, um, he made me put back on my clothes and he to pray. How long was he with you? Three and a half hours, three hours. And, and how about Dan? About the same amount of time? They were about the same amount of time. Um, he, I mean, this was. After you started hitting me with that belt, I'd do anything to make him quit. I mean, right across the face. Mm -hmm. You know, if I didn't do it right, right across the face. Do what right? Um, what did he want you to do to, to be right? Um, if I didn't uh, perform oral sex right, um, lick right, uh, if my teeth got in the way, you know, if anything was even wrong and I was not supposed to touch him at all. I mean, it was he had these little rules that I was supposed to follow, and if, and I didn't know them. And if I, if I broke one, you broke the rules, and I didn't even know what they were. You know, he hit me. So he was just very domineering. He was weird. Slaves. He was weird. And one minute it was like we were supposed to be little kids and play doctor. The next minute I was a naughty girl. And then the next minute we were, we had done this terrible thing where we were supposed to ask God for forgiveness. So you finish up and then you start praying? We're supposed to get up, I'm supposed to get dressed. I'm supposed to get on my knees and ask God for forgiveness. Did he get down and pray with you? 
No, he told me what I was supposed to do. And he said I made him do it. So after we got done praying, we went in the other room and there were two guys there with Danny and Danny was sitting on the couch in between them. Did and they all know? No, they all had their clothes on. Um, Danny just has... I don't think I ever saw Danny cry after that second time when we were in L.A. But I know that he went through something. And he walked kind of funny. I know that they heard him. And... Um... He told me how pretty I was. Okay. And that he just wanted to see. Just wanted to go up. Okay, and what did you say? Um, I was kind of scared. Um, you know, he had asked me before where my parents thought I was again. And I told him that I was supposed to be at a football game. And when I, the first time I, I asked him to stop, you know, I asked him, what are you, what are you doing? Because he started to unzip it. Um, and he, uh... Move your clothing. Yes. Did he make love to you? Make love? Robin, my... He never made love to me. He may have had sex with me, but he never made love to me. Okay. Thank you. Not um, sex, sex. Um, he kissed me. Um, uh, that was the night that he taught me how to get him. And by head meaning oral sex, is that correct? Yes. Did he force you to do that? I know it's difficult. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I think I could have said no. Okay. But I don't know. Okay. And you know, Alicia, you're a victim, and uh, at the young age, let's go off camera for a minute. Um, he took my leg and he folded it. This is a big chair, one of those cushy kind, and so I was straddling him. Were you kind of afraid? Yeah, I was really scared. Uh, did you tell him you were? Mm -hmm. Please use your calendars if necessary. You have to refer back in time. It was either um, August 16th or August 23rd of 1984. I remember that because it was the week before school started, and it was the Thursday of a Sprite Night at the Park. Um, I met some guys there that were from Boys Town, and they had... Um, well, I met one in particular, um, his name is Jeff Hubble, and um, Jeff Hubble had said that there was going to be a party that Friday, and would I like to come? And I said, you know, sure, that I would go. And so that next night, which was, um, I met him on a Thursday that next night, which was Friday, I went to a party. And it was at that party that I met Larry King. At the time that I met Larry King, I did not know that he was Larry King. I, I had met him. It was the first time I'd ever met him. Okay. And uh, after you uh, had met uh, Mr. King... Uh, that and with several other people that were at the party. Um, it 
in the beginning wasn't very intense at first, but within three months, within three months after that, I was seeing um, at least someone from that social group. Yeah. And later, I'd been there about an hour, and Rob came, and he started talking to me. And um, who was that? They came. Rob Rodman. Okay. I I was told to call him Rob Robbie. Okay. Well, just for the record, later on you knew Rob later on to be Bob Wadman. Right. Police chief of right. Omaha, Nebraska. Is that right? Right. Okay. At this time, I still did not know who he was. Okay, go ahead. Um, he came, and we were the only two people in the living room. And he was talking to me, and um, fixed me a drink. What kind of a drink? He knew I liked champagne. Okay. And I think he even brought a bottle of champagne. Okay. Um, I am almost positive that someone called him and told him that I was there. Um, and he told me how pretty he thought I was. And he said that he liked my outfit that I was wearing. And he wanted to know what I was wearing underneath it. Yeah, well, what kind of outfit were you wearing? I was wearing a um, it was an outfit that I had gotten for homecoming. I was to be in the homecoming parade and it was a leather type jumpsuit. Okay. And it was nice. It was sexy. It was about ten years too old for me. As a matter of fact, my mom, when she found it, she cut it up. Um, and he said he liked it, and he wanted to know what I was wearing or anything. How did you answer that question? Um, I was flirting, and um, I asked him what he thought I was wearing or anything. And um, he asked me if I was wearing a bra. And he said that he couldn't, you know, see my breasts, and he told me that I had really nice um, breasts. And um, he touched me. Touched you where? My breasts. Which hand? Um, this one. I was sitting, um, when, um, we were sitting and we were talking and he said, um, when he wanted to tell me what a pretty girl he thought I was, he said, you know, come here, I want to talk to you about something. And, you know, he sat me down on his lap and he put this arm around me and he was feeling my bottom. And first he started. That arm being what? I suppose I was saying just like I. No, I was sitting because we were sitting in the chair that was against the wall. So he had to have this arm around me and this arm. Okay. Was feeling me. So okay. Um. He started touching me through my clothes, and then he undid. Um, my jumpsuit had a zipper jump on it, and he began to undo it. And I asked him to stop, and I was wearing a lace tight bra. And he asked me why he should, and he told me to undo it. And by that time, he'd stand up from the commander's of them. And he'd taken the cushion from the chair and put it on the floor, and I put my knees on it. And after I did his zipper, um, he pulled down his underwear. 
and till next year. Did he grab your head and pull you toward yes. him? And after it was over, I ran to the bathroom and threw up. Was anybody else present when that happened? No. No one came out of the bedroom or the no. one. And at this time of evening, it's still early enough where there's not many people at this party. After he came out of the bathroom, he told me he was sorry. Sorry. So he's crying. And he told me he'd buy me a dress. And he said, um, he said, you go to Central, don't you? Central High School. You go to Central High School, don't you? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, um, Monday after school, Brandeis was still open. Brandeis downtown was still open. And he said, you would go down there and you find a dress that you like. And he told me not to worry about money and that he would buy me this dress. And he said that he wanted to take me to lunch on Wednesday. And he said to meet him out on the side, um, and that he would take, you know, lunch, and I could leave school just to walk out. I mean, after being through this so long, um, I can look back and I know that was planned. You know, I knew that those guys knew before, and that. Afraid. Um, he was talking to me, the whole time that this was going on, he was talking, and he said that he knew that I wasn't a virgin anymore. And... And how did he know that? I don't know how he knew that. That's why I think that what happened that night was supposed to happen that night, the night that I lost my virginity. Um, and he asked me what my parents would do if they knew I wasn't a virgin anymore. Okay. Now how did you respond? I said my dad would kill me. Okay. Um, and how grown up I was. And... Um, he said he wanted to teach me. Teach you what? <sighs> teach me how to make a man happy. Um, show me uh, what a real woman does. And 
Then he said, um, at that time, you just kind of, I mean, to kind of lighten him. And he started kidding about doing the zipper thing. 